Are you starting an irrigation project and wondering what type of tubing pipe or hose you should use? You look at the overwhelming amount of tubing pipe and hoses out there and you wonder, which one am I supposed to use? From PVC pipe to poly tubing, lay flat, oval hose, and even common garden hoses. Each one of them are not equal in every application, however. For example, you wouldn't want to use a common garden hose for a high pressure sprinkler system, as it would likely rupture before long due to the high pressure. Likewise, you wouldn't want to use PVC pipe for a small patio container system, as the rigid pipe would be difficult to work with in smaller spaces and the UV exposure would quickly deteriorate the materials. So let's take a look at the common types out there and identify some of the applications in which they excel and in which they fail. PVC pipe, perhaps one of the most common types. PVC pipe is perhaps the most popular type used other than the common garden hose. It became popular due to its balance between strength and cost. It is durable and can be buried, but also reasonably inexpensive, particularly compared to something like a metal pipe. While PVC pipe can be used for almost any irrigation application, its best use is as a constant pressure mainline. That is, a section of pipe that is always under pressure, such as places located upstream of any shutoff valves. Its durability and strength makes it one of the very few types that can be used in this way. This durability also makes it a great match for lawn and turf irrigation systems. Lawn and turf irrigation systems tend to operate at much higher pressure than we see on something like a drip system, for example. As I mentioned previously, a garden hose used in such a way would likely burst at some point, something undesirable in any irrigation system. It is best avoided in systems where the pipe network will be above ground and in smaller systems where space is tight and a lot of 90 degree turns might be needed. Other material types, such as polyethylene that you see in polytubing and oval hose, FlexNet and LayFlat are much more suited for withstanding the rigors of UV exposure. We recommend only using PVC for subsurface and indoor systems. Also of note are regions where the ground freezes fairly deep. With PVC, it's best to bury it below the freeze line whenever possible. If not possible, other more flexible materials that can better withstand freezing temperatures are recommended. Refer to this chart and you can see common places where main lines are used, such as above ground, underground, indoors, or a combination of those three. This can help you narrow down your choices and find a main line type that's best for you and your project. So, as a quick summary, PVC pipe is great when it has to be under constant pressure, not so great in places where it drops below freezing or has to be used above ground. It's also not the most user-friendly for a beginning DIYer, as it requires primers, glues, cements, and it has almost no margin for error due to its rigidity. Blue Lock Tubing, the user-friendly alternative to PVC pipe. Blue Lock Tubing is an example of high-density polyethylene tubing. High-density polytubing is very durable, and Blue Lock in particular was designed specifically for use in higher-pressure irrigation systems, though it cannot be left under constant pressure. Blue Lock tubing is also not UV-treated, so when used, it will always have to be used in subsurface applications. This makes it great for buried sprinkler systems. Blue Lock also gets a lot of use in colder climates. Though it's more rigid than low-density polytubing, it is still four times more flexible than PVC pipe, giving it a freeze resistance closer to low-density polytubing than PVC. Blue Lock is becoming a line of choice for DIYers. It is much easier to work with and much more forgiving than rigid PVC pipe, all the while offering the same great longevity. According to the manufacturer, PVC has a failure rate of 1 in 48,650 incidents. Whereas high-density polytubing, including Blue Lock, has a failure rate of only 1 in 10 million. Blue Lock, due to its reasonable flexibility, also has a greater margin for error than PVC pipe. And perhaps and most importantly to the DIYer, it is much easier to install the fittings. Blue Lock uses push-fit fittings. This means you simply push it into the coupling and you're done. No primers, no glues, no cements. And unlike a glued and cemented PVC fitting, if you make a mistake, you can remove a blue lock fitting without having to cut out the entire assembly or the area or do complicated repairs that require you to dig up a bunch of your pipe. It's also much easier to transport than PVC. Instead of hauling long 10 foot lengths of PVC in a truck bed, 100 feet of blue lock easily fits into the back of a sedan. To summarize, blue lock is the DIY friendly alternative to PVC pipe and is often used in the same subsurface sprinkler and turf irrigation systems. It's also much more resistant to freeze damage than PVC, 
reducing the likelihood of broken or frozen pipes. And if damage does occur, or you need to modify or repair the system, it is much easier to do so than with PVC. The only real con is that, just like PVC, it should not be used above ground. Polytubing, seen in drip irrigation systems around the world. There are two types of polytubing. High-density polyethylene tubing, known as HDPE, and low-density polyethylene tubing, often referred to as LDPE. When referred to as just polytubing, it's usually in reference to low-density polytubing, like this coil here. Low-density polytubing is great in low-pressure drip irrigation systems, where it will not be used under constant pressure. In drip irrigation systems, polytubing is durable and long-lasting. Polytubing is treated with carbon black as well. Now, this gives it superior UV resistance and allows it to be used above the surface just as well as direct burial applications. Its flexibility also makes it great for a first-time or beginner DIYer. The flexibility is more forgiving on turns and bends except sharp 90-degree turns, and the flexibility also makes it very resistant to freeze damage, something a DIYer of any skill level can appreciate. This also allows it to be used above the ground in freezing climates. Being low density, low density polytubing also uses less material than a lot of other types, and this helps keep the material costs lower without sacrificing life expectancy. We have polytubing available in 1 8 inch, 1 quarter inch, 1 half inch, 3 quarter inch, and 1 inch sizes. We do have larger sizes of polytubing, but those fall into the oval hose category. To summarize, polytubing is best used in low-pressure drip irrigation systems. And there's a reason we include it in every one of our kits. It's also very user-friendly and has a high margin for error, both in the use of the fitting and running it through your field. And finally, it has very superior freeze resistance, allowing it to be used above surface or direct buried, but above the freeze line. If you're going to be installing a drip irrigation system, almost certainly you're going to want some polytubing. However, Polytubing should not be used under constant pressure. It must come after shutoff valves. Burying it in rocky terrain should also be done cautiously, as it's possibly problematic in some scenarios where heavier duty lines like blue lock or PVC would be more suitable. Swing pipe, often used with PVC in lawn and turf systems. Swing pipe is unique in that it has a very specific use. Swing pipe is what is used to connect sprinklers to the lateral PVC line that's feeding them usually in a lawn or turf irrigation system. How it typically works is that the swing pipe comes off the PVC line and then connects to the sprinkler. Swing pipe is somewhat flexible, unlike PVC pipe, so it's used to connect to the sprinkler as smaller adjustments can easily be made, which is not something you could do with completely rigid PVC pipe. Most swing pipe has very thick walls to make it suited for the higher pressure turf systems. Although it looks very similar to low-density polytubing like you used in drip systems, it is not. It is a high-density polytubing and therefore is suited for different applications. You wouldn't want to use this in a drip system unless you were desperate. Also of note is it's not as user-friendly as standard polytubing. The very thick walls make it very difficult to get the barb fittings pushed inside. So to summarize, swing pipe is one of the ones with more limited use and just usually used to connect the sprinkler to the lateral line in a lawn or turf irrigation system. Its thick walls make it suited to those higher pressure systems. Garden hoses, perhaps the most recognizable type out there. Garden hoses are probably the most common water distribution line that there is, with most residents in the United States having one or more of them. While garden hoses are generally not recommended for irrigation systems, there are a couple of exceptions. They can work well for some drip irrigation systems, particularly those that are located very far away from the hose bib or higher off the ground like the balcony or a deck system. In those scenarios, it's common to run the garden hose up to temporarily connect it to the drip system long enough to water and then disconnect it and roll the hose back up. This helps prevent tubing or pipe from needing to hang from the deck or balcony. So, to summarize, garden hoses typically are not recommended for irrigation systems. However, when they do find good use in one, it's typically a temporary system or something that's like a balcony or a deck that's elevated. That way, when you're done using the system, you can disconnect the hose and roll it back up. Vinyl tubing, the most flexible type. Vinyl tubing is a flexible form of polyvinyl chloride, or PVC. Like standard white PVC pipe, it is very susceptible to UV exposure. This means it's best used in indoor application. We have 1 8 inch and 1 quarter inch vinyl tubing available. 
Flexible vinyl tubing thrives in indoor applications. Its flexibility allows it to make the most of available space, take tight turns without the use of a fitting, all the while providing the same volume capacity as other material types with the same diameter. Inexperienced DIYers are often tempted by the convenience of vinyl's flexibility to use it in outdoor applications as well. This is not recommended, however, as when directly exposed to UV, it will quickly become brittle, losing its flexibility. To summarize, vinyl tubing is the most flexible type out there. However, it is very susceptible to UV damage, but indoors growers love it because of its flexibility. Lay flat, often used in commercial drip irrigation systems. Lay flat, like vinyl tubing, is actually a type of PVC. However, unlike PVC pipe, lay flat can go completely flat making it easy to transport and store when not in use. This is an entire football field's worth of layflat. Its most common use in an irrigation system is a manifold for drip tape or poly tubing rows that are fed by the layflat. Its size, flexibility, and ease of transport does see it used as a common water carrying line at times. For example, dragging it around like a hose from one section to another. It tends to be used on lower pressure and higher flow drip irrigation systems, and is often not available in sizes smaller than one and a half inches. Lay flat, like many of the others, is not rated for constant pressure. It has to be relieved of pressure when the system is not in use. Though resistant to freeze damage, it can be easily rolled up for storage or to be moved elsewhere, something very difficult to do with some of the other types, such as oval hose or PVC pipe. Though the material is very flexible, it does have to be ran in straight lines as it cannot turn or bend when it's pressurized with water. To summarize, Layflat sees a lot of use in commercial drip irrigation systems that have higher flow. Its ability to go completely flat makes it easy to store, transport, gives it superior freeze damage, and allows it to be dragged over the field like a hose when needed. Layflat was not designed with irrigation in mind. You can particularly see this over long-term use where the lay flat will become elongated and get displaced and no longer be in the position where you need it. Over time, fittings can also develop leaks. And though it's lighter than PVC, it's still significantly heavier than some types of lay flat that we're going to introduce next. FlexNet, a user-friendly alternative to lay flat. Just like lay flat, it's easy to store and transport, and believe it or not, this is an entire football field's worth of FlexNet. FlexNet, at first glance, is similar to lay flat. It is constructed of flexible material that can be completely flat when not pressurized. And like lay flat, it has to be ran in straight lines when pressurized. It is made of much lighter material, however. Depending on the diameter, it can weigh up to 66% less than an equivalent roll of lay flat. Like lay flat, it is most often used as a manifold in a drip irrigation system for runs of drip tape or poly tubing. And also like lay flat, and in many of the other types, it is not rated for constant pressure. FlexNet has pre-welded threaded outlets at regular intervals, whereas Layflat requires a special tool to cut into the wall of the hose, then another tool to insert the fitting. FlexNet allows you to simply thread the fitting into the outlet to connect your taper tubing. These factors make it a great choice for those working on a big projects and they want to minimize the labor cost. The pre-welded outlets do mean that accounting for the row spacing is critical, as the outlets are predetermined and cannot be moved. To summarize, FlexNet is a great alternative to lay flat. It's used pretty much the same way as a manifold for drip tape and poly tubing runs in a ir drip irrigation system that has higher flow. Though the initial costs are higher than lay flat, the labor costs for using it are significantly lower. The cons to FlexNet is that the predetermined outlet spacing means you really have to account for your row spacing. It also cannot be used under constant pressure. And though labor costs are lower for using it, the initial upfront material costs are higher than other options. Oval hose, an economic choice for larger agricultural systems. Oval hose is a type of polytubing that typically has a larger diameter than the standard polytubing used in drip irrigation. We have oval hose available in one and a half, two inch, three inch, and four inch diameters. It is probably the type we see used the least across the entire industry. Oval hose is most often used in low pressure irrigation systems that have a higher flow rate. A large drip irrigation system is a great example of this, as its larger diameter can be used to transfer larger volumes of water. It is considered a cost effective alternative to PVC and to some degree lay flat, at least for everything downstream of the valves, as this is not rated for constant pressure. Its oval shape makes it pretty easy to transport, particularly compared to the long straight lengths of PVC, 
as oval hose can be coiled up to take up significantly less space. Oval hose, like other polytubing types, is UV treated and can be used above grade without significantly reducing its life expectancy, but it cannot be used, again, under constant pressure. To summarize, Ova hose is an economic choice for larger agricultural systems, particularly drip systems, who can take advantage of its larger diameter to move a lot of water. It is UV treated, so it can be used above surface. The cons to ova hose are that it's larger, which can make it more difficult to store and transport, particularly compared to some other options. It also cannot be used under constant pressure, and doing the initial install and uncoiling the ova hose can be difficult even on a hot day. Metal pipe, perhaps the sturdiest of them all. Metal pipe is certainly the most durable distribution line available. However, its costs correlate and is the most expensive material type available. Due to its size and weight, transport and installation can be time consuming, expensive, or both. The associated costs are high enough that its use in irrigation is infrequent outside of being the line that exits the house, where the system then connects to a more common type like PVC pipe. Despite being the most durable in the most circumstances, metal pipe is more susceptible to freeze damage than most of the other flexible options. It is also more prone to corrosion, real concern if agrochemicals are going to be used. Metal pipe is almost universally rated for constant pressure and can always be under pressure. And of course, it can only be ran in straight lines and can be difficult to cut if the line needs to be shortened or repaired. The most common application for metal pipe is serving as a start of an irrigation system where the piping exits the house or structure. In agricultural applications, it is often used in center pivot and wheel line irrigation systems. In summary, metal pipe is the most durable, except in freezing conditions. The major downsides to metal pipe is that it is heavy and expensive. On a per foot basis, it weighs and costs significantly more than other options. It can also be difficult to use some fittings with metal pipe, as you should not go from a metal male to a plastic female. This can cause damage to the female fitting. Metal pipe, even though it's more durable, is also just as susceptible to freeze damage as PVC, but significantly harder to repair when it is damaged. And like PVC, it can be used under constant pressure. Whether it's for a home drip system or a small farm, you now know the options that are out there and some of their more common applications. With this, you can pick the right one for your own project. If you'd like to take the guesswork out of choosing the best tubing, hose, or pipe type for your own project, you can find our drip irrigation kits right there. In each one, we selected the perfect type. If you're gonna to continue to do it yourself and you'd like to learn how to size your mainline tubing, you can check out our video guide right there. It's a step-by-step -step guide to choosing the right diameter for your mainline.